So this is a picture from uh, Professor David Smy's evidence to the consultation. And it's just showing you uh, the red square there is the actual uh, site where NARIX had its potential, sorry, its uh, potential repository zone. So Longman's Farm is the little red dot. Um, and you can see underneath all that, all these faults, major fault zones running through the area, which could uh, provide fast routes for water flows. This is a schematic picture of how those faults work. You can see it's very complicated. So it's a very complex geology where it's going to be extremely difficult to predict the flow of water and the flow of gas. But one of the key issues is this issue about water flow upwards through the repository. So this is another picture from uh, Stuart Hazeldean. And uh, it shows originally how NARX managed to bring Sellafield back into its site selection process. So it used a concept that was well understood internationally as a potentially suitable site for nuclear waste, a concept called basement under sedimentary cover, which is shown in the top picture there. And the idea is that the waste is in the grey rock, the basement rock, and that that's isolated from the sedimentary cover rock. So water flows tend not to go between one and the other. In order to bring the Sellafield area back into consideration, in 1992, so we're talking quite a long time ago, NIREX came up with the idea of a busk variant site. And that's the lower picture. And the big difference between the lower picture and the other picture is that that basement rock outcrops. In other words, the grey comes up to the surface and it's exposed to the surface uh, where water in the form of rain may enter that rock. And the problem with that is that you also have hills in Cumbria, and the hills provide a level of water pressure, what's called a head, which push the water down through the hills, but then allow it to come up through the repository. So the water flow looks like the top diagram not like the lower diagram, which is an example somewhere in the east of England, where the water will tend to flow downwards through the rock. So you're in an area where there's no natural barrier for the radioactivity to come to the surface. And this is a picture from uh, David Smy's uh, evidence where he's highlighted that in the other sites in the world, so Sweden and Finland are the only countries that have finally chosen their sites, they're in areas which are flat compared to West Cumbria, which has this very big problem with the mountains providing this upward water flow through the repository. Now, we have heard it argued from the NDA and others that reports that came out after the NARIX decision in 1997, so that were published later that year, showed that actually the decision was wrong, that actually the site was suitable. But there are several reasons why that's not the case. Firstly, these so-called NIREX 97 reports do not really contain new evidence that wasn't discussed at the inquiry. They just contain basically a new computer model, a new interpretation of that evidence. But the inquiry didn't reject the plans on the basis that you couldn't make a computer model that came up with a risk calculation that was uh, within the limits, because NIREX had already done that. It was rejected because there were other interpretations that were not within the safety limits. So you couldn't rule out that the site would be unsafe. Secondly, NIREX 97 had already been published when Cumbria County Council rejected NIREX's borehole applications in 1999. So that evidence was considered, and the County Council decided at that time that the site was still not suitable for further investigation. And finally, perhaps most importantly, NIREX's plans, as I've explained, did not include any spent nuclear fuel or high-level waste, which will make the safety case much, much more difficult than it was with the original plans. Another question that's come up is the question of whether it's only Longlands Farm that has been ruled out. And the inquiry itself, of course, focused very much 
on that site, because that's the planning site where the application was made, but it did also look at the process and how NAREX arrived at that site. One of the key conclusions about the process was that it was irrational. It had been driven by political rather than scientific considerations. So we know that we must have a site selection process that must be rational. So I think the first thing that we can say is that if Longlands Farm is unsuitable, the other nearby sites that Narix itself rejected in the move to Longlands Farm have to be ruled out too. And so does the whole area with similar, similar geology, that basement under sedimentary cover variant that I talked about with the upward water flow. And to avoid uh, choosing sites that are more or equally unsuitable, you'd have to consider other geological issues around the area. So this is just a map from uh, Professor Spy's evidence, which just shows how Nirex moved its site around uh, near Sellafield. So it had originally the Sellafield A site, marked A, it then moved to Sellafield B, and it then moved to Longlands Farm. So it was looking for a space of rock between the faults that could actually fit the waste in it, already considered those areas. If we step a bit further out, you can see the whole area down from Longlands Farm between the red hatched area that the British Geological <coughs> Survey has already ruled out, um, is a similar topography. So you're still going to have basically the basement under sedimentary cover variant that was so strongly criticised at the inquiry. And I'm not a geologist, I'm a, an expert in the computer modelling side of things, so I'm not going to try and run through the whole of the detailed geology of West Cumbria, which both Professor Smythe and Professor Hazeldean have done in their evidence. But I am going to point out this key thing that the topography, that uh, issue of the water flows, is the same all the way around the area under consideration. You, you know the mountains are here, and you know that that's going to give you this kind of upward water flow through the potentially suitable areas for a repository. We're just doing the same as Sweden. Well, what's different about the proposal in West Cumbria and Sweden? Firstly, Sweden is not trying to return to an area that's already been ruled out as geologically unsuitable. Secondly, it is taking steps to try to optimise radiological protection, uh, by which I mean try to re reduce the safety concerns and to make the site selection as safe as it possibly can. So you can see in that quote that they say the main reason that they've moved to Forsmark, which was the site they've chosen now out of two that they shortlisted, is that there are few water conducting fractures in the rock at repository depth. Exactly the opposite from what you have here. And they point out that that has great safety advantages. A third reason is the, as I already <coughs> showed you on the map, the selected geology is flat. There's nothing like West Cumbria. Sweden is disposing only of spent nuclear fuel in that site if it goes ahead. So it's not including uh, vitrified high level waste, it's not including those intermediate level waste that are going to give off large volumes of gas. And finally, Sweden hasn't yet successfully made deep disposal of nuclear waste and there are considerable uh, scientific uncertainties and disputes, particularly about the corrosion rate of copper and also about the uh, bentonite backfill, which will also apply anywhere that you try to implement that concept. The final part of my talk is about the politics, because having heard everything I've said so far, you might ask why. Why are they coming back to an area that in effect was ruled out 15 years ago? This is a quote from New Scientist in March 1997, so very shortly after the decision, and uh, from New Scientist saying, Narex made the fatal error of choosing a site for political, not scientific reasons. So what's happening again is that this area is being selected for political, not scientific reasons. What happened after the 1997 planning refusal at Longlands Farm. Well, there were two possible logical ways to go. One would be to keep the same policy that the government then had for deep geological disposal of nuclear waste and to try to look for other sites that were more geologically suitable. That's what the inspector recommended and that's what the, some of the geologists involved thought should happen. 
The second possible option, which would be my preferred option, was actually to revise the policy, to say actually we still don't know enough, we don't know whether deep disposal is going to work, uh, we need to implement uh, long-term dry above-ground storage to try and keep those wastes die, and combine it with further research and an end to new nuclear waste. Both those options, you know, they're obviously very different options, but both of them could have followed from a decision that Longness Farm was unsuitable. But instead, they adopted a third option, which was an attempt to come back here to West Cumbria to put not only intermediate level waste, but also high level waste and spent nuclear fuel deep underground in an area that they knew was geologically unsuitable. 